Here at the American History Museum, there are quite a few famous donors to choose from. Just to keep things interesting, let's play a game called Guess the Donor. We'll start with some clues. Maybe this will help. <laughs> now you got it. You know you're old when your walker has an airbag. Yep, it's Phyllis Diller. Somebody compliments you on your alligator shoes and you're barefoot. After a 47-year career, one of America's most successful comics decided to write a letter to the Smithsonian, making them an offer they couldn't refuse. And Curator Dwight Bowers let me read the letter from Diller. This is fantastic. This comes from a, a legend, essentially, and yet, listen to this modesty. Phyllis says, uh, ever since I heard of the inclusion of Archie Bunker's chair in the Smithsonian display, I have wondered if the Institute might have interest in something of mine. I am enclosing a bio in case you are not familiar with my work. <laughs> you gotta like that. Wonderfully modest. Yeah, you know. And then she says, I have kept the dress I wore with Bob Hope in his 1966 Vietnam expedition. She's basically saying, in case you're not familiar with my work, um, hello, Bob Hope and uh, in Vietnam, so what, have you been living in a cave? <laughs> Just in case you have been cave dwelling, let me give you the Diller 411. <laughs> in 1955, Diller was a working mom with five kids, when life as a suburban housewife was thought to be pretty ideal. Diller decided that it was time to turn that myth on its head. So she took to the stage at 37 years old as the world's worst housewife at the Purple Onion nightclub in San Francisco. And she kept at it until her last one-woman show in 2002. The only thing domestic about me is that I was born in this country. At 84 years old. We got a ring around the tub you can set a drink on. There isn't a person in our family that's got the guts to eat raisin toast. I do dinner in three phases, serve the food, clear the table, bury the dead. When you think of Phyllis Diller, you always think of her role in making the presence of women in comedy, because she was the first woman to successfully have a career as a stand-up comic. Which is a big deal. And it's so a she, very big in deal. In many ways. Back in 2003, Diller essentially opened her doors to the Smithsonian. Shoes, shoes, shoes. Here are the glasses. She said, take what you'd like. And as curator, Dwight got the opportunity to do just that. First thing I immediately chose was this costume that she wore on Broadway in Hello, Dolly. Her costumes were as flamboyant as the comic herself. This is one of my favorites. This is a costume that she would have worn on one of the tours with Bob Hope, replete with wonderful feathers. We tried to get a nice span of her career. But the real find was what Diller showed Dwight last. She said, I have this thing upstairs, and this thing upstairs was the joke file arranged in a room as if it were a shrine. <laughs> and it is indeed a shrine to comedy. And you knew you had to have it. Oh, we had to have this. This is the history of comedy as seen through the 1950s, 60s, and 70s. The gag file. Over her career, Diller amassed a collection of jokes so immense it took her own version of the Dewey Decimal System to keep it organized. There are many promising headings. Avon Lady, Bad Service, Astrology, Astronauts, Miss America. All these cards, little cards, you reach in here. Pull a joke, any joke. So pull a joke, any joke, see? Hoping that you get something funny. They canceled my car insurance just because I ran into something. My insurance agent. <laughs> and the laugh you can hear in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I love the, the Fang sure. jokes about Fang her. Now explain her about Her mythical Fang. first husband was Fang. He was a ne'er-do-well, nothing worked. In fact, Fang didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> when I say Fang is half Scotch, I'm not talking about his ancestors. <laughs> Fang drinks only on holidays. Last week he celebrated Shrove Tuesday, <laughs> Independence Day for three new African nations. <laughs> when I asked Dwight why Diller might have wanted to give her gag file to the Smithsonian, he knew just whom to ask. Hello there, it's Phyllis Diller. Hello, Miss Diller, it's Dwight Bowers at the Smithsonian. Hello, Miss Diller, it's Tom Cavanaugh. How does it feel to have your jokes in one of the most esteemed institutions in America? It must you feel have right. no idea how conceited it has made me. <laughs> <laughs> Phyllis, how on earth did you ever keep track of 50,000 jokes? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> 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 every night I did an hour of jokes. And uh, they're in the computer in my brain and I just have a fantastic memory. <laughs> How many jokes would you tell in an hour? 
Uh, about 800. <gasps> Not a bad record. That's incredible. And don't you have a record for telling the most jokes? Yes, I do. In the uh, Guinness World Book of Records, uh, 12 laughs a minute. 12 laughs a minute. I was just so ugly. Oh, I don't know how to tell you. I wore a choke chain till I was 12. <laughs> My own Ouija board told me to go to hell. A peeping Tom threw up on my windowsill. Uh, you have a joke for me? Are you serious? You're Irish, right? Am I ever? All right. Two, two Irish guys walk out of a bar. It could happen. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make everybody feel good, and I want to spread cheer. You've been a delight, and I hope that you are getting everything you want out of life. Good night. I love you. Diller was once quoted as saying, a stand-up comic is judged by every line. Singers get applause at the end of their song no matter how bad they are. She obviously took this to heart, and now the Smithsonian has all her lines to prove it.